Thanks, Eric. And thanks everyone for coming to our crypto webinar. It's actually more precisely known as how do we apply um, machine learning to crypto trading? And we will be presenting a few successful use cases. Um, so um, uh, for those who uh, don't know me, I'm uh, Ernie Chen. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, PredictNow.ai, which is a, uh, um, a firm that applies machine learning to finance and trading. Uh, I have been a hedge fund manager for the last 10 years uh, at QTS Capital and have written a number of books on quantitative trading. Uh, I started my career as a machine learning researcher at IBM TJ Watson Research Center and, and later on at the Morgan Stanley AI and data mining uh, group. Um, before that, I actually was a physicist. I received my PhD from uh, Cornell in physics. Uh, I also like to introduce our product manager of Predict Now, uh, Sudarshan uh, Sawal, who is uh, going to be the main speaker today, uh, who will introduce us to many of the details of our use case of machine learning in, uh, in uh, crypto trading. So um, let me first uh, introduce the three main um, products that we offer and you know, how uh, the three advances, you might say, in machine learning uh, to trading and finance and, and then specifically to crypto. The first idea that we have um, found to be very uh, useful and exciting is the calculation of probability of profit by AI. So um, you know, traditionally, the holy grail of applying AI to trading is to uh, ask a robot to, to tell you whether to buy or sell uh, a certain asset, Apple, Tesla, or um, Bitcoin, whatever that may be. But that holy grail is very hard to achieve um, because the market is very efficient. And whenever you take a long enough time to learn from the past um, arbitrage opportunities, you would have suffered after decay. And typically the AI algorithm will be making trade that is only successful in the past, but not successful in the future. That has been a well-known problem uh, in, in, in any sort of application of AI directly to generate signals. But recent years have found that AI can be much better used to assist a trader who has an existing strategy to improve that strategy using the probability of profit concept. This is analogous to um, the issue with self-driving car. You know, people have been pouring billions or trillions into developing self-driving cars. But if you look around the street in your neighborhood, tell me how many cars are self-driven, right? On the other hand, most of the new cars that we drive have assisted driving technology. It will tell you not to speed because the speed limit is 60 instead of 80. It will tell you there's a car in front of us, uh, so slow down. It will tell you not to change lane because there's a car behind us in our blind spot. Assisted driving technology have been very successful. It is practically in every new car that is produced right now and save a lot of lives. Whereas totally autonomous driving is still not, a, um, not really a success. You don't see too many cars like that. So this situation is completely analogous to trading. To ask the robot to trade all by itself has not been a very successful use case so far, but using AI to assist a existing traders, uh, assisted a uh, existing trading strategy has been very successful. We will show you the success that we have achieved in the crypto arena, but we have also achieved success in futures trading and many of our users have achieved success in stock trading. The key is that we, the AI program does not replace our existing trading algorithm. It improves it by applying big data to, pre, to calculate the probability of profit. If they find, for example, that your trading strategy is likely to lose money, a very simple way to use that probability is just not to trade that particular day or that particular week, right? So um, it, this application of AI does not generate new trading signals. It only asks you to reduce your trading size or maybe not trade at all. And imagine, you know, even if you have a very mediocre trading strategy, if you can avoid all the losing trades, you will become one of the best traders uh, on earth right now. And that 
is what we have been sort of promoting. Uh, this is the use case of artificial intelligence, machine learning in finance that we have been promoting and we, that we have been quite successful in finding application everywhere, particularly in crypto that we will, that Sudarshan will talk about uh, in a bit. The other application of AI that we have found very exciting is in optimization. Now, this optimization can be parameter optimization of trading strategy or portfolio optimization of capital allocation among different assets in the portfolio. Parameter optimization is very familiar. For example, a trading strategy typically involves what is the entry threshold, what is the exit threshold, what's the sub loss, what is the look back period to compute this or that return. These are all parameters that traditionally are optimized over a long period. So typically we say, okay, this set of parameters work best in the last 10 years. So it must work best in the future three months. But of course you can see that that cannot be right, right? You know, whatever worked best in 2020 worked very poorly, we have found in 2021. And whatever worked very well in 2021, you know, worked very poorly in the last month. So you can see that whatever optimal parameters or whatever optimal allocation to a portfolio depends also on the greater context. Machine learning can help you. Machine learning can incorporate the hundreds of variables that measure the current temperature of the market, of the economy, of the political situation, um, and of sentiment, uh, and incorporate that into making an optimal decision of what parameter we should use for this trading strategy and or what optimal allocation to a portfolio we should make. Again, this is not replacing your trading strategy. Right. Again, we don't want to replace your trading strategy. We want to optimize your trading strategy using machine learning. We want to, or, uh, we don't also don't want to propose a portfolio. We don't say, we don't recommend, oh, you should hold Tesla, IBM and Microsoft in your portfolio and forget about the rest. That's not what we tell telling you. If you have 10 stocks, let's say you want to hold in your portfolio or 10 tokens that you want to hold in the portfolio, we can tell you how to allocate on a daily or even hourly basis but we won't tell you that Bitcoin, you should not hold it. You should use, uh, you should hold Ethereum instead. And we have a successful use case for that, that Sudarshan will talk about in optimizing a crypto portfolio as well. And, and um, it's quite, the improvement over traditional techniques is quite stunning. So this is a technique that we call, we have been calling the CPO technique, the conditional parameter or conditional portfolio optimization technique. And of course it has use cases far beyond finance and we have far pattern on it and all our subscribers are able to use it um, on our platform. Now, another contribution that we have made uh, and that we have uh, released to our users is pre-engineer features. If you ask the current I, uh, B, uh, CEO of IBM, what is the main stumbling block of AI adoption? He would, told, he would tell you, and he have told people that it is data, it is not software. There are tons of open source software out there for machine learning. Google has one, um, TensorFlow, Facebook has one, uh, PyTorch, um, Microsoft has one, like GBM, all kind, everybody has their own open source software. You don't need to buy from us if you are interested in machine learning software. However, most people cannot use them because in any machine learning problem, the key step is to prepare data. And oftentimes the data involves hundreds, hundreds, maybe thousands of features. It will take years to create, but we have done it for you. So in particular for the crypto regime, we have created over 800 of these features to jumpstart your, pro, uh, to jump start your project of improving your trading strategy. You do not have to start from scratch day one and engineer those data yourself one by one. You can use our pre-engineer features immediately, apply it to uh, your own trading strategy using these features and using our machine learning system. Uh, and that with a much quicker way to get results. You, you can practically get results in a matter of days, not years. Uh, if you were to engineer this feature ourselves. So um, now, of course, we don't just have crypto features. So that's when we focus on the crypto features. In our previous webinars, we have talked about features that are applicable to traditional asset management. But today we're talking about the features that are specific to the crypto market. So without, um, uh, without further ado, I am going to invite um, uh, my colleague, uh, Sudarshan, 
to talk about um, the details of our application, our successes. So please take it, take it away, uh, Sudarshan. Thank you, Ernie. Uh, yeah, so as Ernie mentioned, data is the most important part of building a model. And uh, previous to crypto features, we worked on macro features, stock specific features, market wide features. And uh, the next edition, which we thought was most appropriate was crypto features. So our goal with these crypto features were to create features that were to uh, detect not just short term, but as well as long term trends. Uh, uh, and it, it doesn't really have to be just price based features. It can be uh, features volatility re uh, related, volume related as well as uh, market microstructures uh, features, right? So uh, the features, uh, as mentioned this slide as well, uh, are based on uh, relation between prices, volumes, as well as ma market microstructures and volatility features. Now the features are associated with time spans and look back period, which, which helps us generate features, not just uh, to be able to detect short-term trends, but as well as long-term trends. And this helps us create features on multiple time frames for multiple horizons. And uh, this way we are able to create 879 features to be exact. Uh, now you can read the details of the features on our latest blog post. Uh, but uh, to give you a brief understanding, these features are able to detect uh, trading strategy signals ranging from short-term to long-term goals. And we will tackle one of those scenarios in the next slides. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so uh, as uh, predict now offers, the core functionality to predict now is meta labeling. That is predicting the probability of profit. Now this requires your uh, strategy's back-tested performance, but along with that, you need features. And to understand the uh, uh, strength of the features that we described above, we need to apply this to a strategy using meta labeling. Now the strategy that we are using for this example is a high frequency strategy which tries to predict the abnormal returns due to abnormal order flow. Uh, using these features, we create a model on top of that strategy. And the secondary model, which is essentially the meta labeling model, helps us filter out no low probability trades. Uh, now we'll discuss details of the strategies. Next slide, please. Uh, the primary strategy, which is the original strategy, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> is essentially a uh, uh, order flow detection strategy. So it tries to detect uh, large returns due to unusual order flow. Now the strategy usually has 20 active signals at a point. Uh, and uh, whenever one of those uh, signals gets exited or squared off, you have the new, uh, new signal generated. Now the secondary model is built on top of this using meta labeling, which tries to filter out the primary strategy using low probability filter. So we do not take positions on very low probability uh, trades and only focus on strategies uh, on, on signals which have high probability. Now this doesn't re reduce the number of signals because um, after let's say 10 signals, you will still have more signals coming in with, with the, which have high probability. But we are able to remove the low probability trades that were taken in the primary strategy among the first 20. Now the secondary model helps us improve the accuracy of the strategy. So the way we remove the low probability trades, this helps us have a higher confidence strategy. Uh, also using the probability, uh, we can also uh, change the risk uh, risk appetite. So if you have high probability, uh, probability signal, that can be allo allocated much higher risk compared to a low probability signal. Next slide, please. Uh, to understand uh, to understand the performance, um, the secondary model is, uh, I, I'll repeat, the secondary model is built on top of the primary model. So the secondary model is essentially filtering out bad trades that could have been taken in the primary model. Now the results are quite amazing. So the primary model gives us an annualized return of 32.6%. However, the secondary model built on top of this helps us improve that to 227%. That's a 7x, percent, uh, 7x times improvement. And the sharp ratio increases from 3.1 to 6.0. Uh, we have also signed three institutions, uh, which we provide the trading signals, and there are quite a few conversations happening uh, to uh, increase, to provide them to uh, different clients as well. Next slide, please. Uh, now, apart from meta labeling, the features can also be utilized for CPO, parameter optimization, as well as portfolio optimization. Now here we'll discuss portfolio optimization. Now, as Ernie mentioned, usually uh, optimization processes uh, take what worked best in the history and takes an average of that. 
However, CPO tries to optimize what works best in the given market regime and tries to predict, given the current market regime, what will work best going forward. Now, using the feature that we described above, we'll try to optimize a portfolio of eight uh, crypto perpetual futures and compare it, compare it against traditional optimization techniques. Now, uh, again, here we build a machine learning model using the features to try to optimize the forward, going forward sharp ratio of the, of the portfolio. Now, this way we get weights that are going to work best in the future rather than that worked best in the past. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, using this technique, we were able to uh, get, uh, get sharp ratio of 3.8 times compared to mean variance optimization. Uh, uh, now, we are also in discussion with two ETF to optimize their portfolios using the same conditional portfolio optimization technique. We have also applied this to S&P 500 portfolio and tried to optimize the 500 uh, stock portfolio using CPO and compare it against mean variance optimization. And in that uh, example as well, we got a uh, performance improvement of three times. Now you can see the exact sharp ratio uh, as mentioned here, <coughs> CPO gives 0 0.99 and mean variance optimization gives 0 0.26. Now this gives an idea Then mean variance optimization probably selected a portfolio that uh, worked really well in the past, but may not work very well in the near future or in the current market regime. However, CPO did outperform it in that matter. So it tried to find a portfolio or allocation that will work optimally better uh, than mean variance optimization given current market regime. And the given current market regimes are defined using those features. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, now you, you can use these services <coughs> through our API. So we do provide the historical as well as live data of those 100, 800 plus crypto features apart from other features as well for backtesting and live trading with our API. So you can create a uh, meta labeling model uh, as well as CPO using those features. Uh, now you can optimize your trading strategy using meta labeling and create a crypto portfolio using the features and CPO uh, using our API. We also provide a WebSocket API to, uh, to send out these trading signals on a uh, BTC USDT, uh, USDT perpetual future trading strategy that we just described uh, before. Uh, and uh, they are essentially entry and exit signals, uh, real-time entry and exit signals. Uh, and that, uh, that offering is also AUM profit-based fee. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think that covers almost all, all of it, but uh, please do send out your questions through Q&A. Uh, and now I'll hand it over to Eric. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for um, coming to our presentation. Um, we'll now open the floor to uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, write them in the Q&A. I see we already have one. Um, a couple things before we start the Q&A. Um, if you're interested in maybe getting a free trial of um, Either these features are also the uh, models described. You can either email info at predictnow.ai, um, as seen on the screen there, or also you can book a meeting through that Calendly link, or additionally on our website, we have a um, Calendly link that you can book an intro call on to hear more about um, that, maybe specifically to how you're trading. Um, but yeah, thank you for everyone for coming. Um, I'll now open up the floor um, and allow Ernest to answer some questions, starting with the uh, one in the Q&A. Thank you. Yeah. So that's actually the first question is is um is a great question. Um, I think what um, um you are asking is that um you know why is it that feature engineering is so important in finance, but whereas in uh, a lot of deep learning applications, uh, they the motto is that you don't need to engineer features, just use enter raw data, and the deep learning network will learn. Uh, you know, we'll build on top of those raw data and extract features themselves and, and everything is automatic. Well, there have been a lot of research on the difference uh, between deep learning and, um, you know, gradient boosted decision tree and tabular data uh, on tabulator. So essentially the, the difference is that in deep learning, the most successful use cases uh, involve homogeneous data. Whereas the most of the, in the financial use case, it involves heterogeneous data. What that means is that in deep learning, oftentimes the input are language, you know, or it could be image in the form of pixels, or it could be uh, video. Uh, 
uh, sound sound wave or uh, in, in the case of um, of a spoken language um, or just uh, you know written uh, alphabets in terms of uh, if you are talking about um, textual um, processing those data are all the so-called homogeneous data they have the same distribution they have the same properties they are essentially the same thing in finance the features are heterogeneous they are tabular data one column might be new sentiment the other column might be the returns of the crude oil futures and the third column might be um in pipe volatility they are extremely different and so you have to carefully engineer them correctly uh, and you cannot use the raw data. In particular, the raw data oftentimes are non-stationary. So at the very least, you have to convert them to a stationary uh, input. So the data input into a trading application are extremely different from anything that most machine learners are familiar with, such as um, image and speech or text processing. And many research papers have been published in the last few years to compare the performance of deep learning network versus uh, gradient boosted decision tree and find that very rarely do deep learning actually outperform gradient boosted decision tree. And also feature engineering is supremely important in financial data, which are heterogeneous. So the, the difference is between night and day. So that's why many um, experts in deep learning were unable to make any headway in finance for that particular reason. And it has been a well-researched and documented fact uh, in the academic literature. So here, and uh, but thank you for that question. This is a very, very deep question that I was looking forward to answering <laughs> in the public uh, for many months. Um, so there's another question is that, um, are these 800 plus features only for crypto? Okay, so these 800 plus features are, we're talking only about crypto. Of, but if you have watched our previous webinar, which are um, available uh, in the recording, so if you ask uh, my colleagues here, uh, Eric, um, you will be able to get a recording for our previous webinar as well. They're all free, of course. Um, we talk about the 600 plus features that are for futures and equity trading. So, um, so if you are trading traditional assets, we have a completely different set of features that also are pre-engineered for your um, benefit. Um, so David asked about the, um, the kind of features that we have in crypto, uh, whether they are only from volume and price alone. So um, at the present, these features are engineered from microstructure of the uh, crypto market. They are microstructure features. So naturally, microstructure features uh, based on order book, based on trades, based on order flow, and so on and so forth. We have not included things such as uh, external to the crypto market at this point. Uh, we also have not incorporated yet uh, sentiment, for example. Um, let me see here. Uh, there is a question about um, if the parameters can be optimized um, by the software to improve the probability of profit. Um, yes, yeah, so if the parameters for the trade sizing and exposure can be optimized by machine learning, um, what are the limiting factors for a fully autom automated system in terms of performance? Well, so, the problem, as I said uh, earlier, in the um, in a fully automated trading system, is that if you are asking the machine learning system to to um, uh, provide long and short directional signals, it needs a lot of data to learn that, and oftentimes the edge has already been eroded by the time you trade. Whereas if you're using machine learning to um, compute the probability of profit. What, they, what the machine learning system learning is a private data, right? It is not learning whether the Bitcoin is going to go up or down, but it is learning whether your strategy can handle 
particular regime, whether it is a high vol regime or low vol regime, whether it is a training regime or mean volume regime, um, and whether it's a new rich regime or a quiet, uh, quiescent uh, regime, a boring day, uh, uh, a uh, uh, no new day regime, right? So all these um, uh, regimes are much easier to for the machine learning algorithm to learn combined with your training strategy than uh, the actual whether it should go up or down. The, whether the, the crypto market, uh, you know, let's say Bitcoin is going up and down, uh, is what everybody can see and everybody is trying to predict. And because everybody is trying to predict the same thing, the prediction itself will become less and less accurate. There's a, a so-called, George Soros called this, uh, what is it called? Um, reflexivity, right? The fact that you can predict the market means that the market will be unpredictable very soon. Whereas we are not trying to predict the market. We are trying to predict your strategy's success and no one else but you are using that strategy, hopefully. And um, so the success is much more long lasting and it's easier to obtain. Thank you. Um, so let me see if there are any qu further uh, questions. Oh, ah, so um, Gollum uh, asked, how do we um, do feature selection? How do we reduce this feature set? Certainly not all 800 features are as useful for your training strategy, right? We create these features um, independent of any training strategy because they are supposed to be a universal starter kit that is applicable to anybody's strategy. Well, not maybe not successful, not equally successful, but hopefully it will cover a great variety of trading strategy in the crypto market. So it is a very good question. You know, how do we reduce this feature set? Well, there are two answers. The first is that because our um, platform is based on the um, gradient boosted decision tree or random forest, you can call it, automatically it performs feature selection. I mean, the whole structure, whole hierarchical structure of, of a classification tree implies feature selection, because if the feature is not important, it will be pruned back when you are building a tree. So that's a fundamental advantage, you might call it, of random forest versus deep learning. That's why deep learning doesn't work very well in finance on a whole. It's particularly, it's precisely because of this. It doesn't have built-in feature engineering. Whereas a gradient boosted decision tree, because of its hierarchical structure, is built in uh, for feature selection. But then of course, beyond that, we have a um, cluster-based um, MD algorithm, CMD algorithm that we have published three papers on. Actually, I, I remember it, maybe it's two papers plus one preprint. <laughs> so um, that we have demonstrated is the best um, feature selection algorithm because anything else will create instability. They are the, the, the most of the commercial package out there, frankly, doesn't work. And you, if you don't believe me, read our papers to see why they don't work. Only our algorithm as implemented on our platform work. If you don't believe me, read our papers. Uh, it is published in a rivalry journal. So um, it's not uh, just empty marketing uh, boast here. So anyway, so that, that is how we tackle feature selection. Uh, but through uh, a cluster-based feature selection, cluster-based feature selection algorithm. That, by the way, we didn't um, invent. Um, Dr. Marcus Lopez probably invented, but we have added some bells and whistle to make it commercially usable. Um, okay, so um, one of the um, attendees asked, you, uh, "I'm having a hard time." Uh, understanding how the 800 features will sync with a particular strategy. Well, obviously, um, you have to provide the returns of the strategy, right? So your, the returns of the strategy, maybe daily return, maybe hourly return, maybe weekly return, that has to be uploaded to our website, right? So we, on, we need to know the returns. Those are the target variables. Those are the labels. If you are familiar with machine learning, Again, there's, it is thoroughly explained in the previous webinar. So please feel free to uh, watch all of our previous webinar uh, or blog posts for that matter. So the idea is that um, um, you have to upload these target variables, which are returned. And 
then we will provide these 800 features as predictors, as, as the independent variables. You are also free to add your own independent variable. Maybe you have some secret sauce that you think will be very predictive of your own strategy success. By all means, merge it with our data. We don't need to know what they are. They are just a, num a bunch of columns of numbers. We have no idea what they are. So feel free to merge it. We are not going to be able to reverse engineer what they are. So combine them into, hey, a thousand features in order to predict it. But the key is that, of course, we need to know the returns of your strategy in order to train the machine learning model. Um, okay, so another question is, um, if I were to use this AI on my trading strategy, what type of data and for how long does it need to be able to optimize the different parameters? Um, it is, typically I would recommend at least 500 rows of data. So if, if you're doing it uh, on an intraday strategy, 500 rows can be collected you know, in a couple of weeks or months. Uh, but of course, uh, if you're, uh, you, have, you have daily data, then 500 rows in, imply a couple of years of data. So it depends on the trading frequency uh, that you want to predict. But generally speaking, I would recommend at least 500 rows of data for training. Um, yeah. And when you say what type of data, I'm not um, completely sure. You know, first of all, if you don't have any input data, use ours, right? We, we have, as I said, over 600, 800 of them for crypto and over 600 of them for conventional asset. So just use ours as a start if you don't know where to find this data. But um, so in that case, what we need from you is simply your returns, period returns. But if you have data, if for example, you might think that the fix, the level of uh, implied for fix is a good variable, add them. You know, that's the type of data. If you think that, the number of tweets on particular stock that day is a good indicator, add that, right? So any type of data, the whole beauty of machine learning is that everything goes, you don't have to be choosy, add everything that you can think of. The more, the merrier, because remember, we have feature selection, it's not gonna overfit. In the old days, overfitting is a problem, but now overfitting is completely not a problem. It's not a problem because A, feature selection, B, we are doing meta label. We are not trying to, make directional prediction. Ah, so that is a good question. So the features that we provide to you for your own trading, because we are focusing on improving your strategy. We are not trying to uh, use this feature to build a new training strategy, but to improve your existing strategy. So a daily frequency is enough. So the feature, the critical feature that we provide to you for meta labeling, for portfolio optimization, for parameter optimization, those are daily time frame. But the features that we use to drive our own trading strategy that we provide trading signals for, that is not minute bars. They are um, practically tech-based features. So we are, we are using high frequency microstructure features for the trading strategy. Whereas for a meta labeling application, typically we provide daily um, features. Um, so, Ibrahim asks, can we use uh, multiple strategy returns as multiple inputs uh, as a way to build an ensemble strategy? Uh, yes, yes. So that sounds like a, um, a portfolio optimization problem. So the multiple strategy can be considered different components of a portfolio. And so each of them has a return stream and we, we would indeed um, combine them to a portfolio return based on a particular asset allocation, right? So you, let's say you have three strategy, the, the percent investment in each strategy is a parameter that we want to optimize, right? So, so you have, if you have three asset, each of the allocation is a parameter and based on a particular set of parameter, we would know, um, and also of course, based on the particulars specific strategy return, we would know what the portfolio return is. And that's what we want to optimize. You can optimize the forward return of the portfolio, which is probably not a good idea because it would just recommend you choose the best strategy, or it could uh, improve the forward sharp ratio of the strategy. And that typically, that's equivalent to the usual Markowitz mean variance portfolio optimization. We are doing a better job than Markowitz uh, because of machine learning, 
uh, but uh, but this basic idea is the same. You can optimize the allocation to your different strategy as long as you provide the returns of each strategy and um, and provide the um, uh, and, and we will recommend the capital weighting on these strategies. Combine, of course, with big data to make the prediction. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, you're welcome, Jacob. So um, David, you mentioned that uh, David asked. You mentioned that the 500 data point might be ready, but of course there are high bias. Um, yes, so that is a very good question. You know, if your 500 data points are all belong to one regime, like the bull market starting in the middle of 2020, you would not be able to handle a bear market. So these 500 um, data points are assumed to be independent, right? In, in any sort of statistical model building, including machine learning, there's an assumption of independent independence of the um, of the data point in order to build a good um, model to describe them. So if all these data points belong to one regime, they are clearly not independent. So, you know, it would be necessary to include um, multiple regimes. So that would extend it beyond 500. So that, that, that's the, uh, that, but that's a good question. Uh, the 500 is sufficient assuming independence, but if they all taken in one market regime, that would not be the case. And you would have to uh, hopefully, you know, sample them across different regimes. So it could still be 500 data point. It's just that they cannot be um, all clustered in one market regime. You have, to, you have to sample different market regime to make up this 500 um, training data points. So um, one question, okay, next question. For long shot model, uh, would you simply have a column for long shot? Okay, um, no, no, if, it depends on what you are trying to predict, right? If you, have, you can have any model, whether it's a long shot or long only or short only or 500 stocks, some long, some short. Um, all we care is uh, the strategy return. We don't care about how you, you know, in, in the meta labeling application, or the probability of profit application. We don't care how you um, position your individual component, right? So we don't care if it's long or short. We own, only thing we care is the strategy return. However, if you're using it um, this in the portfolio optimization application, then the allocation to each strategy uh, or each component, whether long or short, are parameters themselves. And so of course those parameters can, we can find that you should short all of them. You can, or you can short one or long the other, or you should long all of them. Those are the parameters that we will decide for you. The machine will decide for you. So you are not the one to decide whether you should long Tesla and short Apple, that sort of thing, right? So that there are two different applications. So that it's, um, it's, it's not clear to me what you're asking with respect to the long short model. 